Well, hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for joining our podcast today. We have, for the third time, a repeat visitor and guest, Rod Steele. You've seen him on our shows in the past, talking about the dinar and the overall wealth transfer. Now, before we get started, please do like, subscribe to our channel. For those who are new, it really does help the channel grow in cross-marketing platforms. Rod, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for joining the podcast. Well, thank you, John. It's always a pleasure. I, I always feel that... I'm humbled every time I'm on your show, just trying to keep up with you. <laughs> You're too kind. Thank you for the thank you for the for the uh, the kind words. John's um, brilliant, so, folks. Pay attention to him. <laughs> Most of well, them. <laughs> my, my team and God certainly are. I'm just trying to do them justice. But thank you for thank you for the 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 high praise and the, and the faith. Much appreciated. I, I was going to mention that uh, normally I'm just slammed. I really, totally, I mean, folks, I've been up to like 5 a.m. for three weeks, just trying to keep up with all the people that are reaching out, but um, it was starting to have an effect, and so I'm I'm going back into the gym in the mornings to, to take care of me a little bit so I can take care of you better, and so it gave me some free time while I was working out, and I've been listening to John. I, I see I've heard you with uh, Mal Maloney. And uh, and uh, let's see, there was uh, Mahoney. Mahoney. <laughs> I know him. It's just a brain fart. And then uh, the one I don't know is a little young British guy that looks like he's in a studio. Not Nick, but the younger one. Uh, oh, Chris. Chris, that's our business partner. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I've never seen his face. All right. Cool. <laughs> and uh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and then uh let's see oh yeah there was melanie hines that was the most recent one and so right. and I, I tell you what you dealt with them all beautifully and and the material was succinct and in depth and highly detailed i was very impressed well i appreciate that you're very kind thank you and thank you for for joining us uh faithfully and once again rod we appreciate it so with the new year now intact, 24, well into and almost at the end of January, we're going to trade uh, flip things up a little bit now that we've kind of used to, uh, you know, your processing of information and how you share it. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of let you roll and, and share the information. We have a lot to share with our audience today, so I'm going to let you roll with that. And then we'll work behind that with some of the follow-up questions. Does that sound okay? That's great. Great. Uh, I, I was hoping to have you some hot off the press material right now going into this show. Unfortunately, uh, sources and I couldn't coordinate this morning, so it was not wasn't my fault. But anyway, <laughs> I couldn't couldn't get them, and so uh, but we're we're I know pretty much where we're at on everything, so we're we're just going to roll with it. Um, we're going to look talk a little bit, <clears throat> and of course we all know that. Uh, and the reason I do this is <clears throat> Iraq is the linchpin uh, behind all of the currencies, and so. Uh, that's the one that gets the most information. Not to say that there aren't isn't other information out there. It's just that every all pretty much falls secondary to what's going on with them. So if you know what's going on with them first, everything else is going to fall in place. And so that's where I'm kind of concentrating today. And so we have a lot of excitement in Iraq. Uh, they are trying to come back into the WTO after 14 years of absence. Uh, they have met all the requirements but one, and uh, they've still got to pass the intellectual property law. Um, now, the United Nations goal was actually last Thursday uh, before Sidani left Davos. Mm -hmm. And then people thought, well, surely he'll announce it after he leaves over the weekend. But they still don't have this intellectual property law in place. Um, they haven't voted on it yet. Now, they were putting out articles in Iraq that uh, you know we're trying to throw people off i think parliament was saying that there would be no change in the rate you know for the next year well it's not parliament's job it's cbi's job and basically this is a done deal the contracts with all the uh, surrounding countries have already been signed sealed and delivered uh, you've already got uh, chase bank that took over the lead uh, position among the five top banks here in the us that are going to be handling the uh, rv for us um, they've already got a presence in Iraq. They've got a, a plans for a 30-story high-rise there. Um, Iraq had already shown six um, 
cities that were laid out and ready to be built. Now they have expanded that to 10. And so obviously they have plans on, on making this happen and hopefully soon. Um, so with that in mind, uh, the IMF, the UN, the Treasury, the Federal Reserve have all confirmed uh, that the banks have live rates waiting to be released. And that was true all of last week. Now, it doesn't mean they haven't had live rates before, but they were primarily beta testing those rates. They let them run for two, three hours and uh, see what happened, and, and then they turn them off. Well, those live rates have now been on for a solid week. Uh, and they haven't been shut down yet. So everybody is under the impression that they're just waiting for final authorization to go. And and then those are the rates that we're going to have. Um, now, they want to be called. Oh, yeah. No, never mind. I'll leave that out. <laughs> so uh, any bank should be able to accommodate you and make arrangements for you um, if you go outside the 800 number. Uh, the new blanking floor plans that are laid out are laid out for us, folks. Uh, Iraq is still saying in the coming days uh, to its people, they've actually gone from uh, six um, million debit cards with their local people in Iraq to 15 million in, and that are in hand. Their goal is to get 25 million out there. And they're telling the people that they don't actually need the lower denoms or the new coins that are being released through the marketplace. Uh, it's very limited, but they are getting out. And of course, they're completely worthless at this point. Um, so they're telling them, just use the debit card, which will now have the new rate on it when it goes uh, officially. And so uh, we're all going to have money in our bank when, when we leave. Um, in our account, that's going to be part. Some people were questioning that. Um, now, Sadani, of course, was in Davos all last week discussing plans for 2030. Um, the government on TV in Iraq is disclosing how the smuggling money is being stopped now. Of course, the uh, U.S. stepped in with, uh, I believe it was 13 of their banks that were primarily owned by parliament members. So you had, you know, crooked parliament government people running crooked banks. That's where the UN smuggling was, I mean, not UN, that's where the uh, smuggling was going and feeding right back into Iran instead of to the Iraqi people. Um, so the auctions, uh, they're saying will go away by the end of 2024 completely. Well, they're significantly reduced now. Um, the UN and the IMF are saying that everything is done. Um, again, it was disappointing that we didn't get this after the Davos meeting. Um, we've had trading in commodities in the futures prices are about a little more, just around close to double of what they are in today's rate. So that's kind of an indication that people are expecting things to go up. Um, and then recently, uh, as of last week, actually, uh, we had gone in the wrong direction on this parallel market rate with the uh, the black market and so forth over there in Iraq because they, we were at about 1300 and it kind of temporarily went down to around 11, which is where I bought mine years ago. Uh, now it shot back up to 1500. Well, I'm saying here and now that uh, I had a, re a individual bought dinar. Uh, at a U.S. location uh, for 11 at 1100, so that was a good indication. Uh, banks are still 100% ready. Um, everything is live on those screens, as I've said. Everyone has been trained right down to the teller level. Um, there's about 350 million U.S. citizens and about 20 to 25 million dinar holders. Uh, so that if that kind of gives you an idea of where we stand in this investment as far as a, a, a population. Uh, and and that's that's a summary. If you if you want highlights, that's the highlights. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thank you for that uh, information as always, Rod. Appreciate the overview for our, our audience who's been watching and then maybe some new audience members who are coming into the fold late into the game as well. So now let's break down with some <clears throat> key summary questions or kind of drill down a little bit on what you just shared. Um, I'm glad you brought up the article about 
you know, what the IMF was saying about the budget, because as you know, our fiscal year in America and in Europe is October 1st. Most of the, the right. whole society thinks that fourth quarter, but physically it's first quarter for, for us and the, East, the Western world. Likewise, I don't know if you saw one of the shows you were talking about that you watched, we touched on that issue. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, a key point that we drill down on for the, for the audience today in the aspect that uh, their budget actually runs through March and April 1st is their new physical year, which means that what they're telling us with sleight of hand is that mm-hmm. it's anywhere between and that back wall. So with that in mind, kind of a two question or one question in two parts, if you like. First is, can you substantiate that? And number two, with that in mind, knowing that they don't always often tell us what they're really going to do for a number of reasons, um, what are you hearing from sort of your camp is a high degree of probability that this could go off? Yeah, I'm looking at for it between now and the end of the month, to be honest, but that wouldn't be the first time I've said that. Uh, but we've never been this far along before either. Uh, we, you, now you've got banks that have spent tons of money to make this process smooth and available to everyone here uh, in the United States. Um, matter of fact, I heard what was it? it, it it's, it's slightly off topic, but it's related to the to the process. The, that the med beds that you're supposed to be able to sign up for at the same time, there's like 50,000 of those, I understand, nationwide, and about, uh, what was it, 82 or 300 locations across the country that we'll be able to, to sign up with. I just thought of the tidbit that ran through my head. That's what happens when you deal with ADD people. Anyway, <laughs> to get back on point, um, yeah, I'm I'm looking for it by the end of the month because of the fact that we do have these live rates on the bank screens. They haven't gone away. Um, all of the entities, as far as the, the people involved, as I'm talking about, the IMF has already funded all the countries. Uh, that was we were waiting on that to happen. Uh, UN has has given its graciousness. Treasury signed off on it. Federal Reserve said go go go. <clears throat> so. Whoever's holding this up is way above any of those pay grades. And so, yes, could it take till the end of the quarter? Uh, I have heard some people say that, yes. But at the same time, it doesn't look that way. Um, You know, you've got people that have already signed contracts with Iraq that are ready to go in there. China's in there now. I mean, they're building streets, bridges, hospitals, schools, and they're doing it all with their own people, and they're requiring Mandarin to be spoken, and if you don't want to deal with them and their method, then you can, you know, go get out of the way. I, I personally think that's kind of like their personal political view is, is take over from within. <laughs> but um, anyway, that, that's all going on, and it's, it doesn't make any sense you know, you've got these 10 cities planned, six are already ready to roll out as, as far as the structure and beginnings. There's too much going on. I mean, could it drag out? Well, they've dragged out everything else. So yes, it's a possibility. Uh, on the other hand, at the same time, and I think, I think like you're saying, I think he was trying to give you a window. Um, but remember, Kuwait did the same thing in the 90s. They put out a full page ad and said, no, we're not doing this for another year. And then the next day they RV. So obviously it's to keep some of the people off. And, and keep in mind too, they've been trying to get all the Iraqi citizens to bring their dollars in, telling them that the Iraqi dinar was going to be worth far more than the U.S. dollar. And mm-hmm. now they've got people in lines out the banks, which they've never had before, bringing U.S. dollars into those banks to, to get dinar for them. So there's an awful lot going on. The, the sticking point, I think, is the interference by Iran. Uh, I'm told that all the powers that be are saying there will not be a World War III. Nobody wants it. Um, But at the same time, we're having to deal with their interference. And when we do, they get all upset about it. Well, Mm -hmm. it's like, we want y'all out of Iraq. Well, hello, we've got too much investment in Iraq to leave Iraq. I mean, yeah, we'll We'll make the presentation that we're leaving and all that, but I guarantee you there's always going to be a U.S. presence there. Yeah, without question. In fact, that's a good segue, Rod, to my next question for you. I think it was about a week and a half ago, it was reported, we dropped it on our Telegram as well, for those who have joined, 
um, that uh, U.S. has added another 1,500 troops to the roughly 25, I think, that they have, or 2,500 that they have over there now. Do you think that's with the express purpose of providing additional redundancy so that, because you know, once Iraq puts up their parliament, the reforms, taxes and tariffs, the ACL, which I think have already, already kind of happened, they're just prepping it for a certain time as it's a staged mm -hmm. event, like everything. Once I that happens, the you know, the like property law is. I, I think it's yeah. a done deal. It's, they just won't release it yet. Right, right. So with that in mind, I guess segueing to that question, do you think that uh, our military is going to wholly get involved and kind of once Maliki gets nuts and all the manufactured chaos and panic as they see the inevitability of the Iraq returning to the international stage, I think our military is going to be integral in kind of pulling out those Iranian prox proxies that have been such an issue for well, yeah, and basically we we told them that it's like you boys, you know, you guys keep up pulling your stunts, and we're going to come down on you like you've never believed possible. I don't can't is beyond my imagination. It's like you know Davy and Goliath with Davy being without God on his side. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, like, do you you get this little Chihuahua that barks at the Great Dane, and the Great Dane mm -hmm. looks down and goes, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I just it, it makes no sense to me if it's not theater you know and unfortunately there's some some weak innocent victims getting taken advantage of and, and you know seriously injured and killed along and that's that's horrible um and I hate yeah. to see that but um for some reason they're dragging it out this way to put on this show and they know they're never going to win um so why do it? You know, and, and what really bugs me is they're only going to be a few cents behind the Iraqi dinar in the RV. So mm -hmm. they're infinitely better off by having it than not having it. So where's their mindset? You know, other than they just hate America, I don't get it. It's all fair points. Uh, segueing to the next one. Uh, so you mentioned JP Morgan. I was kind of glad you brought that up because I get questions a lot about which which are the you know, the most preferred banks to go to deal with when you go, it's time to exchange. And we know JP uh, Morgan plays a, uh, a, a integral part in that, especially when you're hearing Jamie Dimon with more upticks about various financial uh, mechanisms. But um, there's also been talk about uh, JP Morgan at some point. I, I don't, we don't put a lot of, our, over in this channel, we don't hang our hat a lot on dates and rates per se, just our a philosophical mindset. But, you know, that being said, a lot of discussion has been about, bantied about, about J.P. Morgan going bankrupt or insolvent by the 23rd. Um, what can you tell us about that? And also, how does Wells Fargo also play an important role in being one of the banks to exchange? Yeah, I'm going to try to remember all that so I don't get too far off base. But, you know, I have my personal opinions of Jamie Dimon. I don't like the guy. I don't trust him. I wouldn't do business with him if I could, you know, as far as I could see him. Uh, on the other hand, and, and Chase, as a rule, from my experience, if you don't have much money, they would rather you not bank at their bank. But if you apparently have plenty of money, they treat you pretty well. So I guess for us, that they we won't experience the bad side of Chase. I've experienced the bad side of Chase. And I told them they would never get a dime of my money when I was rich. But, you know, but um, and, at the, and at the same time, as far as, as what Chase is doing, honestly, it, you, ethically, you might not like it, but from a business perspective, it's just good business. Uh, they're shoving themselves of debt before this happens. And that way, they're just going to get to enjoy more of the profit from the RV when it does happen. It's going to make them more flush. Uh, they're going to be extremely well off. They've got the lead contract for the second time um, for, for the distribution on the RV. The top five have all had it at one time or another. All five have stolen from us or, or been dishonest in some method or form, shape, or fashion within the banking industry. And um, when I say stolen from us, I'm referring to the proper prosperity programs that they took money from. And all five of them did because they got taken away from all of them and given to the next one. The next one would do the same thing, pay a fine, keep the majority of it, and then you go business as usual. So I don't have a lot of um, appreciation for those five banks. But um, the other side of it is, is the Wells Fargo side. 
honestly, you know, you say, how do you feel about them? That's probably who I'm going to go with. I mean, they had the lead contract last among all, they were the last ones to get it. And they were doing fine, except uh, as a matter of fact, China, the Chinese elders, which basically own HSBC, bought 30% of Wells Fargo with the intent of keeping them with a clean nose uh, so that we get this RV done. And then in spite of that, Wells Fargo managed to create all these phony bank accounts so they look better on the books. And then they got caught doing that. And so that's how they lost the lead contract to Chase. They've still got, they're still involved. And I still like a lot of the leadership with Wells Fargo and especially here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I will probably go personally with Wells just because of who I know and, and the location that, that is involved. But that doesn't mean that the other three that are involved um, couldn't be just as good. Um, they've all going to have uh, various ag agreements with the U.S. Treasury as far as what their spread is on, on uh, any negotiation that you might be able to do with them. So obviously Chase is going to have the, the most room of anybody, but I guess if I looked at it from a good business perspective, that's probably who I should go with. Uh, I just don't trust them. So I'm not going to. <laughs> but, you know. Very good explanation. Thank you for that uh, summation, uh, Rod. Uh, a couple of qu other quick questions, because I know your time is short. So we're, we look to the prophetic word often on our show with Kim Clement when things seem at their worst. And as, as, as we feel the uptick of attention this year, we know layoffs and, you know, the, the bad economy. It, it's true, bad economy, not what the mainstream is trying to cover up. And, and we know that, you know, QE printing is coming and all that, you know, quantitative easing is coming. With all that kind of in the pot, <clears throat> Looking at it, um, he said that when things seem at their worst, I would free my people, says the Lord. So we know that that you mentioned Iran has to play a part in this, their part in the play. We also look to Israel and the grave mistake that we're anticipating with them in terms of the nuclear attacks, the secret nuclear attacks on Iran, tying them back. Uh, obviously, you don't have a crystal ball, but but looking at the information that you are able to ascertain, when do you surmise that that might happen are we it hasn't gotten bad enough yet but are we getting to that tipping point do you believe that it's it's going to be coming sooner than later it seems to be increasing almost day by day and uh if it wasn't for the fact that i knew all the leaderships of all the countries involved have said that they're not going to go to world war three i would be getting very concerned uh actually that if it's that you mentioned that uh reminds me that this rv was actually scheduled to happen October 7th. Uh, and of course, we had the invasion on Israel October 6th, which is identical to what happened on 9-11, the day that the prosperity programs were supposed to be delivered and the initial steps of Nassara were going to be introduced. And so it's the same exact scenario, different players, but the same people in the background. And so um, I don't believe Iran is personally any more responsible for, in other words, I think they're the puppet behind the puppet master. Uh, they're, they're doing, they're playing the role, they're told to play. And so I, I think this is going, these guys are going down fighting, literally in this case, um, but also the leadership behind them is going down fighting. And um, it, they've been that's been going on since I've been involved for 25 years. I've, I've personally had five colleagues of mine that were taken out by the deep state. Three of them were attorneys in the prosperity programs. Two of them were going to bring us free energy in the late 90s. And they're, they were just done away with. And the company was just disappeared as if it never existed. So, you know, when I get these gripes from people about, yeah, 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 it hadn't got anything happening, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, when your friends have been killed and and you've been in this 25 years, then come back and talk to me. But um, anyway, yeah, I I don't think it's going to be the end all problem. I think we're going to have it. Like you say, the crescendo is is coming. Uh, I don't think it's going to go nuclear. That that really would that would bring you that would bring World War Three. But I think that's the scare that is, that is coming into it. And right when we get to that point, I think we're going to be. You know, it's when you and I'll be going in while everybody else 
is listening to their TVs and radios about what's going on. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Uh, last question for this particular session with you. Obviously, you're not a financial advisor, and this, none of this is constituted as financial advice. We're just sharing the knowledge that we've been blessed to obtain and giving it to the people accordingly. But <clears throat> with that said, and for how long that you just mentioned you've been in this movement, um, would you say for those who are kind of thinking about getting currency or have currency or maybe wanting to add to the cachet of their current position, would you say that this is a, a good time to start maybe reinvesting in the new year for what we're waiting? That's what I did, you know, uh, because the, the, the one thing I've always ended with is every time it, it, you get disappointed that you, you don't see the date you thought you were going to see, use that date to buy more currency, if you can. Don't go in the hole for it. I've actually had people say, well, I got so much available on a credit line. No, do not do that. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. As, as much as we think we know, we don't know it all, okay? And so with that in mind, never put yourself in jeopardy financially to benefit from this, okay? Do what you can afford to live without and nothing more. If you have it, great, do it. And incidentally, I can help you uh, not on the purchase, but I can tell you, uh, I, I was going to do that in the wrap up, so I'll let you do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, folks, you heard from Rod, his position on it. If you are interested in getting more currency or getting it for the first time, uh, we there's many great companies to choose from, and we'll leave one of those as a link in the description. Rod, with that in mind, what final thoughts and musings would you like to share with our audience? Well, I'd like to, to make them aware that I uh, had no idea that there would be such a strong uh, demand for the fact that I, I reached out two or three weeks ago telling folks that uh, I would be willing to step them through the um, exchange appointment experience uh, from the standpoint of what they can expect rate-wise. We know what those live, live rates are on the screens right now. Those can be adjusted based on certain factors, and I will step you through that. Uh, there's an options available for considerably more if you happen to be in the right place and so forth. Uh, I can help you with that, uh, and it makes a significant difference in how you walk out of there. Um, I'll also go through the experience of the people who've already gone in front before you who have had SKRs, uh, what they experienced. Uh, not only with the bankers, but the, the cautions that they were given by the bank uh, to be prepared, uh, negotiation tactics that you can use to garner higher interest rates from any accounts you set up outside the QFS. And um, uh, that's, that's kind of the tip of the iceberg, but we cover an awful lot in uh, about 30 minutes. And so if that's something that would appeal to you, uh, please reach out by uh, direct message on my X account at uh, Patriot Rod Steele. It's uh, just S-T-E-E-L, no E on the end. Um, be patient with me. I've got a week of people in front of you already. So next week is already booked, but we will start getting you in after that. Um, and um, I, it's uh, most people have absolutely loved it. And so well, I haven't had anybody that didn't, to be honest. <laughs> and, and we've dealt with people all over the world. Although I will say the information that I have is predominant, well it is, it's U.S. information. Some of it overlies, overlays into other countries, but not all of it. So, you know, if you want to take that into consideration. Very good. Rod Steele, thank you for being on our podcast once again. We look forward to having you again on a future show and thanks for your time. Have a blessed rest of your day. God bless, John. Appreciate it always. Pleasure.